Hi folks, very quickly to finish up as an addition to the previous video where we were discussing some of the aspects of market resource demand, I want to follow up and just to focus in on some of the phenomenon out in the real world that will cause shifts in demand curve for market resources. Um, there are five different phenomena that could produce a shift in the demand for market resources. Those being the price of the final product, uh, productivity of the resources, the number of buyers for that resource, uh, the substitutability of the resources, and then the quantity of actually other resources that are available at any given time. Let's go through these one at a time. Price of the final product. Uh, you know, when the price, for example, of copper rises, the demand for copper miners is going to increase. So the demand curve shifts for copper miners would shift out to the right. Mining firms will hire more workers at each wage rate in order to produce more copper and earn higher revenues if the price of copper goes up. Productivity. When, when a resource becomes more productive, and that, that really means it's when each unit of resource can produce more output, the firm will use more of that particular resource. For instance, if the new printing presses are able to produce twice as much in the same amount of time as the existing printing presses, the demand for new printing presses will rise. The demand curve for printing presses then will shift out to the right. Number of buyers, when new firms enter into an industry, they of course require resources. So the demand curve for resources will shift out to the right. Uh, for instance, when Walmart builds a store in a small town, it's got to hire workers and acquire land and capital and buildings and other supplies. So the demand for workers for capital and land and other building supplies, with the entry of Walmart, um, the demand curve for all of these resources is going to shift out to the right. Substitutability. Uh, when the change in the price of a substitute resource uh, occurs that will that will affect the demand for the resource that we are analyzing. For instance, if labor and machines are good substitutes in the production of iron ore, and the price of labor rises, then the demand for machines increases. So the demand curve for in sheet of machines is going to shift out to the right. Uh, conversely, if if copper and plastic are substitutes in construction, then when the price of plastic decreases, the demand for copper then will likewise decrease and the demand curve then for copper would shift to the left or would shift in. Last one, uh, the quantity of other resources. Um, more capital available tends to increase demand for, all, uh, for a lot of other resources. Um, let's say a restaurant for example has 60 tables. If it's only using 10 of them it's only going to require one, maybe two waiters. But if the other 50 tables are suddenly in use, then the restaurant is going to need way more wait staff. Um, with a bigger pot and more soil, the quantity of flowers grow uh, with each additional amount of fertilizer applied, for example, will be larger than it would be with a, like a smaller pot and less soil. Uh, more capital tends to increase the demand for labor. More land tends to increase the demand for, for more tractors. Um, you know, put quite, put quite simply, the demand for resources depends on how many other resources are available. So, uh, just to kind of recap, uh, the demand for market resources isn't quite identical, but it is very, very similar to the demand for uh, market uh, products in the product market. And the one key thing that you must, must, must remember when you're analyzing resource markets is that the households are doing the supply and the firms are doing the demand. And if you can keep that straight, then you're going to do just fine in analyzing these resource market questions. Next video, I'll see you for resource market supply.